Hey, Vaughn here. SJ got a recommendation for the one and only SJ. How scientifically accurate is Jurassic World? What Ganga Tosaurus? I don't even know if I'm saying that right. If I butchered it, oh well. You know what? Since I'm probably butchering this dinosaur's name, we gotta we gotta come up for a name. Even though I'm, if, even if I'm saying it wrong, bro, that's just gonna be have to be the name I call it because it's too embarrassing to correct it. Giganotosaurus. Giganotosaurus. Y'all thought I was gonna say that? Hell no. Anyway, we didn't spend two minutes trying to say this da damn dinosaur's name. But anyway, we're gonna hop straight into this to see how scientifically accurate Jurassic World is. Now let's be real here. How accurate is Hollywood gonna be, bro? So we're gonna hop straight into it. So if you're new, like, comment, subscribe. If you're not new, just keep coming back. Subscribe, bro. What are you doing? And we're gonna hop straight into it. Giganotosaurus was one of the largest carnivorous theropods to ever walk the earth and has become an iconic dinosaur since its discovery. While it's not quite as popular as Tyrannosaurus rex, this animal has recently become more famous thanks to its role as the primary antagonist of Jurassic World Dominion. And while Jurassic- Wait, I didn't even see the new Jurassic World, bro. World I Wars. wanted to so bad. If they ever drop on HBO, I'm on it. Wait, is it on HBO right now? Probably not. No, it's on Peacock. I had Peacock for like a little bit just to watch uh Parks and Recs. I ain't gonna lie, Parks and Recs is, is it was funnier than the Office to me. I ain't gonna lie. Bam! I went to see Bryce Dallas. Oh well. I knew Rod would get dinosaurs into the limelight. What was shown in the movies is far from what the animal was like in reality. So in this video, we will be taking a look at what Giganotosaurus was actually like. Giganotosaurus. What did I call it? What Gangatosaurus? You know what? Even though I learned how to say it, Giganotosaurus, that is a name. Giganotosaurus. Whatever I called it the first time, that's what I'm gonna call it. It's like world tradition. We will start by taking a look at what we know about Giganotosaurus according to Giganotosaurus. science. And then we'll take a look at the Jurassic World Giganotosaurus to see how scientifically accurate it is. Enjoy. Science has been giving these things some names. Communicating. The holotype specimen of Giganotosaurus was first discovered in 1993. These fossils came from the Candeleros formation of Patagonia, and the skeleton was almost 70% complete. In 1995, the animal was named- How long did it take to assemble these things? Like, you gotta legit find- How long did it take from, for them to assemble a dinosaur? I know it take a while. Giganotosaurus carolinii. The genus name, meaning giant southern lizard, and the species name was given to honor the discoverer, Ruben D. Carolini. Giganotosaurus is part of the Carcharodontosauridae family of theropod dinosaurs and is one of the largest members of the family. The name Carcharodontosauridae means shark tooth lizards and was named after the first species added to the family, Carcharodontosaurus. Carcharodontosaurs were the largest predators of the early and middle Cretaceous and spanned all across the globe. The first Carcharodontosaurs emerged during the late Jurassic with species like Lusovenator. Over time, these animals continue to diversify and become both specialized and bizarre predators. Some evolved crazy features like Concavenator's signature hump, while others went towards gigantism. Towards the end of their evolution, Carcharodontosaurus began to grow larger and larger in size, leading to the giants like Giganotosaurus. Giganotosaurus could reach lengths of 13 meters long or almost 43 feet and weighed a whopping 8.3 metric tons or almost 18,000. If dinosaurs are still around today, where would they be located? Not only that, bro, we could not live with dinosaurs, bro. We could not do it. We could not do it, bro. At all. 300 pounds. In comparison, Sue the T-Rex weighed a staggering 9.7 metric tons, or 21,384 pounds. So Giganotosaurus may not have been bigger than a T-Rex, as we're so often led to believe, but hey, at least it was longer than a T-Rex. 
One thing that the T-Rex and Giganotosaurus shared in common, aside from being large, meat-eating theropods, was that they were both warm-blooded animals. In 1999, the paleontologist Reese E. Barrick and the geologist William J. Showers found that the bones of Giganotosaurus and Tyrannosaurus rex had similar oxygen isotope patterns with similar heat distribution in the body. These thermoregulatory patterns indicate that these dinosaurs had a metabolism that was somewhere between that of a mammal's and a reptile's and were therefore warm-blooded. The metabolism of an 8-ton Giganotosaurus would have been similar to that of a 1-ton mammalian carnivore, indicating that these animals would have grown rapidly. This would have also meant that these animals would need to eat an average of 30 kilograms of meat per day. While speed estimates vary, research done in 2016 by Asier Laramendi suggests that Giganotosaurus could reach speeds of up to 30 kilometers per hour. They may have used their speed to ambush their prey or even target slower moving animals for a higher chance of success. Fossils of the closely related Mapusaurus were discovered in a bone bed consisting of eight individuals at different growth stages. The different size ranges of animals present suggest that Mapusaurus adults were tolerant of smaller individuals and weren't actively trying to eat or kill them. This led scientists to believe that these animals were part of a group and they died together due to a catastrophic event. Hunting in groups may have been advantageous when taking on large sauropods. Group hunting may have also increased their chances of success. Modern day Harris hawks, a type of avian dinosaur, will hunt in cooperative groups of up to two to six individuals. These groups tend to be more successful than lone hawks, with a 10% increase in success per extra individual. However, it's still not 100% certain if Mapusaurus or Giganotosaurus were truly group hunters or lived in a family unit. While the answer remains unclear, more discoveries will help scientists better determine the full picture. Despite being a massive predator, Giganotosaurus did not have a strong bite. A 2005 Damn. study done by Dr. Francois Therrien and colleagues showed that the bite force of a T-Rex was three to five times greater than that of a Giganotosaurus. Five, three to five. That is a massive difference. But like, damn, yeah, imagine being that big, your know, bite force, not really all that. In fact, Giganotosaurus and the related Acrocanthosaurus had relatively weak bite forces. Instead, their jaws were more adapted to slicing bites. Hmm. This is further supported okay. by the shape of their teeth. Giganotosaurus had flat, serrated, blade-like teeth, similar to those seen in other Carcharodontosaurs. These teeth were perfect for slicing through the flesh of dinosaurs. The authors also this suggest kind of that Giganotosaurus was a generalized predator and fed on a wide variety of prey. They most likely targeted prey smaller than themselves, such as juvenile sauropods. They may have also just bitten chunks off of larger sauropods, similar to what modern day orcas do to baleen whales. Furthermore, the absolute chad chin of a Giganotosaurus may have actually been an adaptation for resisting tensile stress when the bite was delivered with the front of the jaws against the prey. Who knew that such a cool feature was there for more than just looks? Giganotosaurus lived in the Candelaris Formation approximately 99.6 to 97 million years ago. The environment at the time was mostly semi-arid with some rivers and streams. Giganotosaurus shared this landscape with the Titanosaur Andosaurus and the Ribachosaurid Limaisaurus. These sauropods may have been primary prey items for Giganotosaurus. Being the largest carnivore in the region, an adult Giganotosaurus would have been the apex predator and would have little to fear. However, there was another large predator in the region, an albilosaurid Ecrixonatosaurus. Ecrixonatosaurus is one of the largest albilosaurids to ever exist and it's still unclear if these animals were in direct competition with Giganotosaurus. Maybe they often clashed, or they avoided each other by fulfilling different ecological niches. If a fight were to ensue between the two animals, Giganotosaurus would most likely win by using its larger size to intimidate and scare off opponents. Giganotosaurus was truly an awesome and awe-inspiring animal and would have reigned supreme until its extinction around 97 million years ago.
can't. So now that we've gone over what Giganotosaurus was really like as an animal, let's compare it to the Jurassic World version. Okay. For starters, we're going to look at the head anatomy. The first inaccuracy here is that the Jurassic World Giganotosaurus lacks the absolute chad chin of the real animal. Instead of giving the animal the more scientifically accurate absolute chad chin, the Jurassic World this. Giganotosaurus was given a softer, weak sauce chin instead. Tragic. Moving on, the shape of the teeth are incorrect and are much thicker than the actual animal's teeth. Furthermore, their uneven and jagged arrangement isn't the most realistic and was done to give the Giganotosaurus a more gnarly appearance. They had, reality, to, they had to add some Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood effect to it. ...to help better assist with slicing bites. The skull shape of the Dominion Giganotosaurus seems to be based on older reconstructions of the animal, with a more slender and elongated appearance. The more up-to-date and modern... I feel like Jurassic World gotta do that, though. Because I feel like if they make it, like, realistically accurate to what dinosaurs actually look like, some some of the dinosaurs wouldn't look as badass as they do in the movie. Some realistically looking dinosaurs that are accurate don't look that cool, bro. Like, they don't look that... For, like, movie-wise. For, like, movie-wise, they don't really look that... Cool, good. So they had to add some Hollywood spice to it. He's like, I'm not mad at it, but some dinosaurs I feel like don't need to have some Hollywood spice for it to look good on screen. But even then, I mean, like, I mean, they could use realistic. I mean, it might not look as good, but like, at least it's accurate, motherfucker. Day reconstructions of Giganotosaurus show a much more stout and compact skull. Why am I getting emails? Another <laughs> notable feature of the Jurassic World Dominion Giganotosaurus skull is its sharp, blade like crest. While there isn't direct fossil evidence for such a feature, it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility. In fact, the brow of Giganotosaurus is extensively long with a knobby rugous texture alongside the skull. In life, this could have supported a keratin structure of some sorts, so a keratin crest of some form could have been present. Now let's move on to the body. One of the most notable attributes of the Jurassic World's designs are the large spikes and osteoderms running along the neck and back of the animal. Osteoderms are bones embedded within the skin and are seen on modern day crocodilians. However, Giganotosaurus and other Carcharodontosaurus didn't have such integument. The Dominion Giganotosaurus also has a protruding hump on its back which is further accentuated by the spikes and osteoderms. Now one thing that the Jurassic World Dominion design actually did get right was the position of the arms and wrists of the animal. Up until now, all of the Jurassic World theropods had pronated wrists, meaning that their palms faced downwards. In reality, theropod wrists pointed towards each other, similar to modern day birds. The Jurassic World Giganotosaurus actually has this correct wrist placement, the only major difference is that the arms of the real Giganotosaurus would have been slightly smaller. And finally, the last inaccuracy worth mentioning is the time period. The Jurassic World Dominion prologue is set during the end of the Cretaceous period at 65 million years ago. However, we now know that the Cretaceous period actually ended 66 million years ago. And of course, Giganotosaurus shouldn't be here since it died out 97 million years ago. The only reason it was featured here was so that it could have a face-off with a T-Rex. One of the main reasons why Jurassic World dinosaurs typically get a pass for being so inaccurate is because they are genetically engineered with modern-day animal DNA accurate is see like this is what i'm saying like imagine you seen this on like <laughs> uh there it is <laughs> wait you mean it's me this is blue real life bro you gotta add some hollywood spice to it no wonder jurassic world did what they did like you gotta add some hollywood spice to it to make it look good for the big screen because if this was blue on the big screen i'd be like what the hell it would like I mean, I wouldn't care, but I'm like, man, he don't look as cool as this. He look like a damn duck. It's because they are genetically engineered with modern-day animal DNA added in to fill in the gaps. 
However, the Giganotosaurus featured in the Cretaceous prologue looks the exact same as the modern day clone, so that excuse doesn't really apply here. It would have been nice if the prologue Giganotosaurus was actually anatomically accurate and up to date, because if anything, okay. <clears throat> that would better reinforce the idea that the dinosaurs in Jurassic World that are shown in the modern day are not meant to be identical to their extinct counterparts. Okay, I'm just thinking, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know, I was trying to say something, that's why I paused, but I'm like, oh yeah, I was trying to say, like, who would you rather see on the big screen? The one to the left, would you rather that be on the big screen, or the one to the right? I ain't mad at either one of them being on the big screen. I feel like the one to the right could have been on the big screen. I don't know if they didn't put that on there. I don't know if they knew this is what this dinosaur looked like, and they just wanted to add some Hollywood spice to it, or they just genuinely thought it looked like this. Either way. Both of them would have been cool on the big screen. I mean, you could have been like, they should use the real dinosaurs and how they actually look. But it's like, eh, you know, Hollywood. But if that was the case, I wouldn't have made this video. Before I conclude this video, it's important to mention that nothing stated here is to necessarily discredit or disprove of the Jurassic World design. You're not Rather, sitting in shots, it's okay. the entire purpose of this video was to better illustrate the differences between the fantasy of Jurassic World and the reality of the fossil record. The scientific yeah, yeah, yeah. accuracy of Jurassic World dinosaurs will always be a contentious subject, since it never seems entirely fair comparing movie monsters to the real extinct animals. However, these films have a tremendous impact on the public's perception of dinosaurs and do an excellent job invigorating public interest. That is true, because I thought Blue looked it like that. For real, like, I thought that was him in real life and on the screen. Okay. The goal of these videos is to use that interest to create a more healthy nah, no, and blue in real life with a little science like a communication. Through my artwork and animation, I hope to make learning about the movies and the real science That is such a huge difference. Like, bro, that is such a huge difference. Healthy and oh, wait, like, is it, this is the Jurassic World thing, right? Fun approach. And then this the is like, nigga, this is like this reality. Like, expectations, re reality, like. <laughs> and the real science, fun and enjoyable for better. everyone. And while I crack jokes here and there, I promise it is not out of bad faith. After all, all of us love dinosaurs and enjoy these Jurassic movies. Any dialogue about dinosaurs is good, so might as well have fun with it. Yeah. You're just talking shit. You got it. Come on at me, weak, well weak sauce chin boy. God damn. Yeah, Velociraptor. Blue is like a female Velociraptor. That looks very different in real life. She will look very different in real life. That being said, we learned that, um, whatever, I don't even remember what I called this thing the first time I started this video, but we learned that they look entirely different, and Hollywood may add their little spice to these dinosaurs to fiction them up a little bit, add their little fantasies to it, but it's all it is, it's a little Hollywood spice. It's kind of crazy they do influence the public view of dinosaurs, because Every dinosaur I've seen in Jurassic World back when they first came out, I thought was accurate. Still, to this day, I thought it was accurate. Nah, no, it's just a bunch of Hollywood bullshit. Nah. <laughs> See you on the next one. Peace.